जिसको हम रोग प्रतिकारक शक्ति बोलते हैं सो दे प्रूव इन द रिपोर्ट दैट चेंटिंग द होली नेम ऑफ गॉड कैन गिव यूर बेटर मेमोरी पावर increase your will power and confidence better your buffer capacities increase the strength of your immune system isn't this a very big advantage you people are businessmen anything foc you like it this is foc chanting the holy name for 12 minutes you don't have to give anything even when you are bathing even when you are doing your morning course you can have it seriously but sitting at one place and doing is more advantage but such big advantages at university of columbia they surveyed 1 lakh families over 8 years in 110 countries of the world in five continents across caste creed religion nationality and they came to a conclusion that a small religious activity every day like chanting the name of prayers and everything it gives you better health it increases the academics of your children and more importantly they finally said that it has the capacity to increase your tolerance level and increase your acceptance level for a better family life your advantages so rethinking your goals principally in one line of all that i talk today is don't just go for your materialistic pursuits your wealth your status your fame at the same time try to be a great human being where you have all the good values and virtues you distinguish yourself from an ordinary animal life you remain satisfied with your life and at the age of 80 or 90 you can put your hand on your chest and tell yourself yes i lived my life if you can do this it is well lived so finally understand the difference between fun joy happiness and bliss we all take fun as ultimate happiness i just exemplify by one line then i will end my talk you want to drive a car at 100 miles per hour and you got to drive and what you experience is fun you wanted that car in your possession to own that car and you got it that is called joy you can keep that car life long is your happiness and if you lose that car by an accident or to a theft or you have to compulsorily sell it to meet other financiers you don't feel the sense of it going away from your life because you tell yourself when i was born i was not born with this car and when i will die i will not ca carry this car along with me so it was somewhere in the middle that i got it somewhere in the middle i lost it and you can remain stable that is your bliss <laughs> reaching that level of bliss is the human goal so don't enroll yourself with just fun and joy activities go a step further to happiness and bliss activities that is rethinking your goal my all prayers for all of you thank you for patiently listening to me and i definitely pray at the feet of my guru pramukh swami maharaj and present guru mahan swami maharaj to bless us all with this wonderful thinking may we all better our own lives may we all sitting here become one small factor in developing and reaching the lives of people around you thus enriching the environment and we just not want to leave a better world for our next generation we want to leave a much much better and rich environment for our next generation my all prayers for all of you thank you very much these are the times of broader highways but narrower view point these are the times where man has gone all the way to the moon and has come back but he finds it difficult to cross the road and meet the new neighbor these are the times where man has broken the atom and he has produced tremendous amount of energy but he finds it difficult to break a prejudice the list is very long describing the state of affairs of the 21st century man and society but in short you can say that these are the times where we have much to show in the show window and nothing in the stock room we live in this century 
and as the theme of your conference, we are into the fourth industrial revolution. I myself, I'm an engineer. I finished my engineering way back in 1991. I could see from the faces of many that when you were just in your shorts and as toddlers, I finished my engineering. And then after I took my diksha, I'm a saint since 26 years, so I know both the parts of the world and both the parts of life. I come from one of the largest organizations in the world, the BAPS Swaminarayan Sanstha. How many of you have been to Akshardham at Delhi or Akshardham at Gandhinagar? Almost all of you. I come from that organization. Such small and big, we have 1,300 campuses in 60 countries of the world. We have a permanent seat in the United Nations as an NGO. We do 162 different kinds of social, cultural, educational, medical, environmental activities across the globe. And when I want to talk something to you today about rethinking your goals, I have personally met and sat at least for half an hour with more than 25,000 families go visiting their homes in more than 20 countries and 100 cities around the world. So let us talk something about goals as a smart professional and goals as a great human being. We all sitting here, I think all of us are very clear in our minds that we all want to be smart professionals and great human beings. This combination, isn't it? Give me a yes or no. You want to live a good business life, you want to live a good personal life, you want to live a good social life, you want to live a good family life. Yes or no? So we need to rethink our goals, redesign our goals and rebuild our lives not just for the betterment of our own kind, but for the betterment of the society at large. From my experience of personally meeting and sitting at least for half an hour with more than 25,000 families across caste, creed, color, religion, nationality backgrounds, let me share with you something. First important aspect, that everybody needs to accept and really accept from within is that no man is perfect and that no man includes me and I also. Put your eye to a little lower level and you will be in a position to accept the best of thoughts from all directions to rethink your goals. Bill Gates, perhaps the second richest person upon this earth, he has written his book, his autobiography, Business at the Speed of Light. How many of you have read it? Just two or three of you. You need to read it. It's as good as attending this conference. He writes in this book, how an high school dropout, he himself, Bill Gates, he becomes the richest person upon this earth and a self-made richest person. He writes that the secret of my success is the culmination of three things. First, determination. Second, intense hard work. And third, acceptance of the ideas of others. You have to keep your mind open. You have to keep your ears open. You have to keep your eyes open to accept good ideas from surroundings that can constantly